What's up team, welcome back to the auditorium. Today we have a development length design example for you. Part six of the full retaining wall series that I kind of threw together here. We have the strength of our wall determined and our rebar sized, but now we need to develop that rebar from the wall into our foundation. If you're just trickling into the auditorium, trying to find your seat, trying to get your popcorn, you'll see I have these figures written down. You can pause the video if you wanna take these down and then work side by side with me. You can always come back up later. I'm gonna be re-referencing this. Uh, I have our required bits of info that we'll need in order to solve our calculations today. Um, two biggies that are kind of from previous videos. AS provided, uh, we determined we needed number eights at six inches on center when we were uh, determining the amount of steel required to get a capacity for our retaining wall. And then AS required is uh, the amount of steel that we actually needed based on our calculations. And long story short, we couldn't find a sweet spot to get the two numbers closer together last time. You have standard size bars and we just couldn't, couldn't make them match perfectly. So there's a little bit of additional capacity in our wall. Maybe we can use that later. But the more important figure is over there on the, uh, what is this, left for you, is it right for you? Hey, Zachary, thanks for subscribing. Whoa, that's the first time someone subscribed while I'm recording. That's crazy. Anyway, hey, thanks man. We are now zoomed in at the bottom of our wall where that puppy uh, connects to our retaining wall foundation. We are obviously developing our rebar to make sure that our wall stays connected to our footing. Cause you can put all the rebar you want in your wall and it can be super strong. But at the end of the day, if that wall, how am I gonna do this? If that wall is not connected adequately to your footing, boop, it'll just pop off. Um, so this thing could be like Fort Knox. I mean, it could just be solid, solid steel and bulletproof, but if it's not connected to your foundation to develop all of that strength, the, the how strong you make your wall kind of is useless. The two colors here are the two different things we're finding. LDH in green, which is the development length of your rebar for a hooked case. So we are going to add standard hooks, as I've written down here, at the end of our rebar development in order to help us out. You can do straight bar development or you can do add hooks to the end. Calculations aside, thinking about it, when you add a hook to something, when you're trying to embed it into something, it's gonna be really hard to pull that thing out in comparison to if you stuck a stick in the ground and you pulled that stick out of the ground and it's that's just a straight stick. The one with the hook is a lot more difficult to pull out. So by adding a hook, you, you decrease the length with which you need to develop your rebar, which is great because ultimately that means less steel that you need to spec in your drawings. It means that your design, when they're making the cages and tying all the rebar is less congested. That's a big problem sometimes. Less material means a cheaper structure just from a material standpoint. Uh, shorter lap lengths and development lengths means a happy contractor. So think about those things as we move forward. There's obviously cons to some other stuff, but you can never cut corners, obviously. Anyway. Sorry, sorry, we're moving on. We are gonna head to ACI 25.4.3 to find LDH. Something I wanna point out quickly, um, the first thing you're gonna pass is something that looks very similar to development of hooked bars. And that is the first section, which is development of deformed bars and wires in tension. Tables and sections look very similar. So be careful with that. Let's head over to the hooked. Hooks in tension. They give us an ultimatum here for finding LDH and we need to provide the greater of possibilities A through C, and they provide them here. And B is really easy, it's just eight times the diameter of your bar. C is just straight up six inches. I don't know when six inches works, to be honest. Leave, let me know down in the chat, you experienced engineers out there. When the hell does C pencil out and for what kind of situation, but still. You have your three options, you check them, you take the largest one of those three. A is obviously the one that needs all the additional calculations. It's not a lot though, so don't freak out. We need all of these variables, and it says right here, very straightforward, head to this section to find those variables. Oh my gosh, it's literally the next page. And it's this beautiful table here, and they have everything that you need. First of all, we have our lambda, and this is just normal weight or lightweight concrete. I said in today's example, it's normal weight concrete. You ain't making a retaining wall with lightweight concrete. Maybe you are, I wanna see it, it would be really cool, but it's normal weight today. 1.0, easy. Poseidon's trident, because I keep forgetting what the hell, is it gamma? This Roman numeral, or this, uh, uh, this symbol is, but yeah, 
Trident E, yeah, that guy right there, is based on the coding of your reinforcement. We're uncoded, so we're 1.0, also easy. Trident sub C is cover requirements for your rebar. Number 11 bars and smaller hooks with side cover, so we are a number eight bar, so this is us. With side cover, normal to the plane of the hook, greater than two and a half inches. So this is talking about like our rebars coming in and then those circles with the hooks going in and out of the page. Facing for side cover is two and a half inches. So like that way and that way from other of the bars that we're trying to develop. So we have bars at six inches on center. So we meet that two and a half inch criteria. And then for 90 degree hooks uh, with cover on bar extension beyond the hook. So here's the bottom of our footing. So down here, and because it's the bottom of our footing, we know we have a clear cover of three inches. So we are good there because we're greater than two inches. So both those requirements check out. So we can use 0.7. If you wanted to stay conservative and you weren't quite sure, you could just go other and use 1.0 and you'll see that app that will add length to your development length. And then Trident sub R, confinement reinforcement. This one has a lot of, of additional criteria, but it mostly comes down to just if you have stirrups that are confining the full development length of your bar. They give you some nice figures to kind of explain further what they're talking about. We don't have any stirrups or any jazz like that. So for us, we're simply just other, which is also a 1.0. Don't forget diameter of bar is on the outside of your equation. You can run all your numbers and get it and get a number that's like 15, 16, but you have to multiply by diameter of your bar. So don't forget a number eight diameter bar is one inch. All right, and we can see that uh, I leave this in terms of diameter of bar. That way you can compare it to B. And if this first number right here is larger, then that means A governs over B and vice versa. You always need to take the largest number because they're asking for the greatest value of the options. So A controls over B, so B is out. Now, if we plug in the one inch, that gets us 14 inches, which is greater than C of six inches. So C is out. And a little side note I wanna point out here is that uh, there is no fee in your calculations. And this is actually stated in the commentary in section, uh, what is it? 25.4.1.3. There you go. Uh, they do not require a, a fee factor. And then in the commentary next to it, it's already lumped into the equation that they provided that we were using to solve. So LDH equals 14 inches. Well, what do we have going on here? A footing thickness of one foot, six inches, but we have, like we said, clear cover of three inches. Uh, my hook's gonna go all the way down and be aligned with my bottom mat there. So that leaves us one foot, six inches, which is 18 inches minus our clear cover of three inches. I am also gonna say that our bar is one inch diameter and I'm gonna exclude that. So subtracting another one inch means we have 14 inches available for developing our hooked bar. Well, our answer was 14 inches, so we just have enough. So we can fully develop those number eight bars to get the full capacity of them, which is great. Say the footing was only one foot thick, now all of a sudden you don't meet the, uh, the requirements to fully develop your number eight bars. That means you're not getting enough, you're not able to fully rely on the full strength of the number eights like you did in the wall for the connection here. And you might have to start playing around with resizing your reinforcing, going with smaller bar spaced closer together, or you thicken your footing until you are able to get that full development length requirement or there's actually one other trick that I was only able to find for compression reinforcement. We're doing tension reinforcement right now, which says that you can actually uh, linearly reduce your required development length based on the area of steel that you provided um, versus how much of steel is required. And that means you could say, well, we only need 1.32 inches squared per foot of steel, but instead we actually put in 1.5 inches squared and we're trying to develop that fully. Well, in reality, we don't need the full development strength of the bar that we provided. We only need, you know, we're only utilizing 84% of that steel. 
So we really only need 84% of our uh, development length in order to meet our requirements. I only found this, again, in the ACI and the compression section, but in my SU design manual, they state that you can use this, uh, this ratio for tension steel as well. But uh, talk with your principals, talk with your project managers about that, and see if you, uh, you get to rely on that or not. The other thing I wanna quickly point out that I kind of dodged today is we had our shear key, a oh, what a key? A shear key in our previous design example, and I totally just neglected it today. Uh, in reality, you could develop a straight bar or even a hooked bar down into this key, but I just sort of neglected the shear key today because I think designing without a shear key, if I can say it right, is more applicable to more people's situations and the designs that they're doing. So, you know, why not show it? That's gonna be the end of today's example. For next time, we're gonna get into the blue zone because I, I just, I keep rambling so much. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thank you for learning with me. And until next time, I'll catch you. Peace.